Hey, this is Lewis from SoFly. In this video, I'll show you how to create responsive, sticky, multi-row headers using Oxygen's header builder element. So to add a header builder to your page, go to Add, Helpers, Header Builder. Let's open the structure panel to see the structure of a header builder. Inside a header builder, we have a header row. You can add as many rows as you wish to your header builder. And inside our header row, we have row left, row center, and row right. Elements placed in row left will end up on the left side of the header. Elements placed in row center will end up in the center of the header. And elements placed in row right will end up on the right side of the header. So let's go ahead and add a logo to our header. So add basics, image, and I'll click browse and choose my already uploaded logo. Let's close the structure panel just so I can see it in full size. Let's set the height of this logo to 33. And now to position the logo in the header, you simply drag it. If you want it in the center, drag it to the center. If you want it in the right, drag it to the right. If you want it on the left, drag it to the left. And now that we've added a logo to our header, let's add a menu. So go to Add, WordPress, Menu. And I don't actually have a WordPress menu set up on appearance menus on my site. So this just displays a few sample menu links and an example dropdown. So I have something to work with when styling before I actually create my real menu. There's another video on how to actually create WordPress menus from appearance menus. So I'm not going to get into that here. So let's drag this over to the right. And now we have a menu. The menu video also covers the menu styling options. We can adjust text styles, spacing between links hover and active styles, drop down styles, and when the menu turns into a responsive toggle like this. So I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but now that we've created our first header row, let's go ahead and add another. So to add another header row, you have to go to the header builder. So to activate the header builder, you can click a header row and then click up to get to the header builder. You can click header builder when a row is active, or you can click header builder in the breadcrumb nav. So once you activate header builder, you'll see this add another row button and let's add a second row. Let's go ahead and set the background color to blue and we'll put this row on top. So I'll simply just drag it up to the top. Now in this row, I want to display some text to show my business opening hours. So I've added a text block, call this, I'll make it white and then I'll write um, open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays only. And then let's add a social icons element. So helpers, social icons. And the social icon color by default is blue, so let's just change that to white. Let's adjust the icon size and space, and then drag that over to the right. And then to add padding in our header row, we simply click the header row mouse over the top edge and drag to add some space. Same for space on the bottom. Okay, so now we've created a multi-row header. Now let's adjust how it displays on responsive. So if we go less than 992, still looks good. Less than 768, starts to get a little cramped, the text wraps, we don't want that. So what we wanna do is stack the header vertically below 768 pixels. So simply click the header row you wish to style, under stack vertically below, choose less than 768. Now the row will stack horizontally from left to right on desktop. And once you get down to less than 768, it will stack vertically. Let's adjust some spacing on this text. So I'll click that, add some space. All right, looks good. Now we have a responsive multi-row header. Another thing you can do is hide a header below a certain device width. So if you click the header row, maybe you only want this to appear on desktop. So you can say hide row below 768, and now the row will be hidden. So very configurable. Um, I actually don't want to hide this row ever, so I'll choose never. That's the default. Uh, now let's make the header sticky. So that means it will stick to the top of the page when the page is scrolled down. So I will add a section to my page and I will put some text in the section just so we can actually see the section scrolling. So let me just duplicate this a bunch of times. So now we can actually scroll the page down. 
Now let's make the header sticky. So to do that, click the header builder. That activates a header row. So let's go to the header builder and choose sticky. Now the header will be sticky. One problem, uh, the header is transparent. So the text on your page appears behind the header when you're scrolling. To address that, simply set the sticky background color to the background color you wish to use for your sticky header. I'll choose white here. And now we've created a sticky header. To customize this, we probably don't want the top row of the header to appear when the header is sticky because we don't want to take up too much vertical space when the user is scrolling. So let's click the top row of the header and choose Hide and Sticky. Now when the header is sticky, the top row won't be displayed. Another thing we can do is control when the sticky header displays on mobile devices. So let's go to the header builder. And right now it's only sticky above 1120 pixels. That's the default and that's what I recommend. I don't think sticky headers on small mobile devices are a very good idea because the device is already too small. You don't wanna take up more screen real estate than uh, you have to. But let's say we wanna make it sticky down to uh, 768 pixels. So now above 768 pixels, the header will still be sticky. We can also say sticky above 1120 and now it will only be sticky on wide devices like desktops. Okay, that is how to create a sticky multi-row responsive header using Oxygen. Thank you very much for watching.